Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. I'm going to create this sort of knurled metal object here. Gotta be honest, I saw a Cinema 4D tutorial and I thought, yeah, I could do that in Moto. So let's just do it in Moto. All right, so this is a good introduction to mesh ops. This is 100% procedural. So I can go here to the cylinder, turn on channel hall, and I can right click and drag and create more uh, segments or slices. So I can create a sort of a denser knurled object or I can create more uh, resolution of slices along the edges and all the neurals sort of go along with it, right? So that's the advantage of doing something with a uh, procedural object. And so we're gonna show you how to do it. So this is a good introduction to mesh ops if you haven't really used them that much. And it really kind of goes into the sort of planning you have to do with mesh operations versus just direct modeling. The payoff being you can make these changes, which if I you know were to do what I just showed you with direct modeling, I'd have to restart and make it from scratch, right? So there's advantages to mesh operations. It just takes longer. So let me just kind of go from the bottom up. I'm just going to work backwards uh, or actually just kind of show you how the stack is built and then I'll make one from scratch as well. So just starting with the cylinder, what we do is we create a couple of selection sets to help us out later. And you can kind of see this. Maybe I'll just go wireframe so you can kind of see what this is, right? So these selection sets are procedural, so, you know, they don't involve me selecting things manually. So we can go back, you know, and, and change things like the number of segments on our cylinder and everything just works perfectly, right? And so we've got another a selection set above that, I call border, that we're going to be using as well. All of this kind of goes into the pre-planning. It's often useful to model this stuff with direct modeling first, just to kind of see what your steps are, like how you select things. You know, do you select, you know, certain polygons, then invert them and then do operations? You know, that really helps you plan your route when making a procedural version. So for the spike, first spike here, we're just creating um, some edges, these, these crossing edges here, you see in order to then use those for the neurals. Again, you can see sort of diagonal sort of edges here. We're not actually spiking out um, spikies yet. And then we're deleting the old square edges. So now we've got these sort of diagonal topology, right? And then we spike those out. And then I just have a little edge chamfer at the end. So you can adjust just that uh, all you want with, again, it's fully procedural. So it's a really nice way to work. So let's start from scratch. I'm gonna hide this one, press in for a new mesh item and just start over. So again, starting with the cylinder. Okay, so I'm just gonna eyeball this. I'm just gonna hit you know space for mini props and go resize from center and then drag down, whoops, drag down on my handle here, not like that. In fact, you can actually go to uh, channel hall, I just press C and right now left mouse is just set to radius for all three axes, but you could just, you know, swipe up on left mouse uh, for radius Y and you can just go like this. I, I'm gonna suggest Foundry, redo your primitives and give us a radius and height for things like cone and cylinder. It'd be so much better with channel hall and lots of other things, but that's digressing. Uh, for the sides, again, since we have channel hall up, I'm just gonna right mouse click and go left, right to get 64. And then right mouse click up down until they're sort of square or squarish. So, you know, about 14 or so gives me a nice squarish looking uh, polygon there. And yeah, that is good enough for our cylinder. So now let's create some selection sets. And again, now I just modeled this thing with direct modeling first, sort of looked at my steps and thought, okay, well, like how could I do these selections procedurally? Because while you can do manual selections with mesh operations and do like a select by index, which just makes a list of all the, the indices, the, you know, the sort of IDs of all the polygons you select, that doesn't help you when you want to be procedural and change the number of, of polygons by changing the sides or segments, right? So we really want a rules-based system here. So when I add a selection op or assign selection set operation, and I'm going to um, do the selections uh, procedurally instead of uh, manually. So the first thing I do is do a selection assembly. So again, if you're new to this, You'll see these selection operations here. And again, my, if you like my icons, the, the Warren icon kit. Um, and these are just some compiled you know, selection operations. We also have some selection assemblies, which are just sort of little nodal networks made from these guys with some logic, right? So you can like uh, pick ingons or by polygon island or by, you know, edges with a certain vertice count. Those are usually found, those sort of conditional things are usually found under the assemblies. I want to pick ingons. Okay, I'm going to start by picking ingons, but I want the top polygon and the bottom polygon. 
So I'm going to select by n-gons, which is anything with uh, greater than uh, five or greater polygons. So that is in here somewhere. Select n-gon polygon. There we go. And if you select it, you'll see that this slightly greenish tone there. That means those two are selected. And then I'm going to grow that. So let's add another selection operation. And let's do grow. And we're going to grow that by one. So we get it like that. And then I'm going to invert it so we get that, right? Now, keep in mind I want an edge selection set, not a polygon selection set. So I'm going to add one more selection operation here. Whoops. One more selection operation here, and that will be convert. And remember, like anything in a list, selection operations go bottom up, just like mesh ops, just like the shader tree. So we're selecting ingons, then we're growing it and inverting it. Now we're going to convert it. We're going to convert it from, this is a little bit of a confusing one, because you think it'll be like convert from or to. So the convert to part of this is implied by whatever um, mesh operation you're using. So if you have like a polygon bevel mesh operation, it's assuming it wants a polygon. So it's assuming you're gonna be converting to call it polygons. So we're gonna be converting um, from polygons, but our selection set is actually gonna be edges. So we're gonna change that to edge. So we're converting from polygons and our selection set, whoops, make sure you're on the right tab here, is gonna be edges. So we're just gonna call this sides like that. And then you can actually see it in the stats. If you look over here, you'll see sides. If I click it, you see, let's go to wireframe, all those sides there. So that's what we want for our first one. And then we want one more. We're sort of creating a boundary that we're later gonna be subtracting from that sides selection set. And so we're gonna create another assign selection set. And we'll just call this uh, border. And again, it's gonna be edge, we'll call it border. And we're gonna use rules to create this border. So the first one will be the same as last time. We're gonna select those ingons first because they're easy to select. It's a good starting place. So select by ingons. And then we're going to grow it again by one. So we're gonna say grow. And we want it to go one. So one thing that may throw you off is you don't see that sort of ghosted selection in the viewport. Part of that is because our, our mesh operation, the assigned selection set is set to edges and we're selecting polygons. If I were to change this to polygon, it's gonna flow all the way up. We're gonna see that we've got that sort of greenish ingon and then we grew it like that. Uh, but we ultimately want edges. So the last thing I'm gonna do is uh, the select uh, boundary edges right here. And so it's going to you know grab the ingon, it's gonna grow it, then it's gonna select the boundary edges and I just want to remember to change our selection set. We're creating an edge selection set. We'll call that, yeah, border. Um, we type it in there. And you can, again, check it in these stats here. There it is. So, again, if you look at wireframe, there's our border. And we're going to be using that, again, later on down the road. So, okay, now let's do our first spike, which is going to help us create those uh, sort of horizontal topology that we want. So, first off, the uh, polygon operation is spike. And you'll see it spiked everything, but we want to limit that to just those polygons there in the middle. So we're going to do a selection operation. We'll be select by selection set. Right here, our selection set is sides, that first one we made. And remember, that is a selection of edges. So we're going to convert that to polygons using the convert selection command or selection operation that we used earlier. So we'll just do convert. So remember, we're converting from edges to polygons, right? So we don't have to do the two part because this operation, Spike, which it is expecting polygons, determines that part. We just, we just have to tell Moto what we're converting from. We're converting from edges. So it's taking these selected edges that we had in the selection set, it's converting them to polygons, which then are being spiked. And you can see the spiking going on right there, right? And since we have a spike value of zero, of zero let's just make sure it's zero, um, we're just creating that sort of cross hatching. So now we need to get rid of these edge loops like this, right? These here, also these ones going up and down. So we're gonna use a delete command with our uh, selection sets that we made earlier. So go to delete. You wanna make sure that's set to edge. And of course it just deletes everything because we don't have any selection sets or selection operations in there. So we're gonna do the first one, select by uh, selection operation, right? Or select by selection set, I'm sorry, select by selection set. And the first set is just, we call it sides. And you can see it's selecting, they're all in green there. You can kind of see the green. Thing is we actually want to keep 
this top loop and this bottom loop. We need those to uh, help contain our, our area here that's gonna be knurled. So we need to subtract that from this. So we add another select by selection set. And that's just going to be our um, border selection set that we made earlier. And this time, instead of just overriding it, we're gonna subtract it, right? So now we've just got uh, all the ones we want, except we're preserving those bottom loops when we delete. So we deleted it and we kept the top loop. Whoops, we kept the top loop. The top loop there and the bottom loop right here, we're also keeping, right? So we're keeping those by subtracting that from that operation. And then we are going to add our final spike. And this will uh, give us our knurled surface. But of course, once, once again, we're going to be using a couple of selection operations. Now, we blew away our selection set. So we just turn spike off. Like all the edges that were in here that had that sides selection set, we deleted. They're gone. And so we need to do this a little bit differently. So I'm going to do um, add selection operation. Again, we'll do a, start with our ingons. We're going to select by ingon. And you can see the ingons selected here. Let's turn on spike. But we're going to invert it so it's everything but the ingons. And then we're going to add another selection operation here. We're going to do grow shrink. We're actually going to shrink it by one. So let's do negative one. You can see it shrunk by one. But then we also want to get rid of these triangles here. So we need one more. And we'll do a selection and assembly. I believe there is a select triangles in here. Uh, select triangle polygons right up at the top. And you can see those are selected. Gets it set to override. We actually want to set that to subtract. So we're subtracting the triangles. Once again, we selected the ingons, right? But we inverted it. So it's everything but the ingons. We then shrank it. So it's our area we want, but we just don't want those triangles. So we are selecting the triangles, but subtracting them, right? And then we're doing our spike. And I'll just press uh, C for channel hall and spike this out. And there we go, there's our knurled surface. And then if we go all the way back down to our cylinder, we can turn off uh, ghosting here so we can see the results. And again, I can use right mouse to increase the number of uh, segments. I can you know, drag up and down to make this bigger that way. If I do that, then I have to right mouse up, down, increase the number of sides or uh, loops in there to get it sort of more squarish. And so, yeah. 30 or so, and that's how that works. Now we have a procedural neural. So again, it's worthwhile um, exploring procedural modeling uh, because now that I have this made, I can crank out a bunch of different ones. I can freeze off ones or copy paste them or merge mesh them into other things. But it's not immediately obvious to like, you know, creating these selection sets, right? That are gonna help you further down the line. And it's it's not magic. You just have to like, just sort of model it, right? You know, direct the direct modeling workflow and then sort of see what your procedure is and then replicate that uh, with selection sets and inverting things and growing and shrinking and uh, subtracting out polygons or adding polygons via, you know, via various other selection operators along the way. One thing I will say is this would be a lot better if, if the more select by previous operation things we had, the better it would be. For instance, right now, if I change my cylinder instead of having a single polygon at the top, which is an ingon, which we used a lot, right? And I have changed that to a quad grid, it's gonna mess everything up because now that select by ingon doesn't work. There are no ingons, they're all just quad grids, right? So I turn everything off. My cylinder just has quad grids everywhere. Well, the cylinder doesn't work with select by previous operation. So I should be able to just do a select by previous operation um, and to get the tops and say, you know, just the top of the cylinder or just the sides of the cylinder you know, like you would with a bevel operation. You can like go to select by previous operation. If you have a bevel before it, you can say select the top of the bevel, select the size of the bevel. Select by previous operation is super useful. It's probably the most useful selection operation we have. And every single mesh operation, like every single one um, that creates new geometry, whether it's clones of geometry, we should be able to access the indices of those clones um, or primitive, we should be able to access the the base of a, of a cone or the top and bottom of a cylinder, anything that can be utilized further down the stack should be available to, to us via select by previous operation. So, you know, I know 
it's probably tedious for Foundry to go back and go through, comb through all the mesh operations. But honestly, every single one of these mesh operations should be feeding information to a select by previous operation node that'll make this will make procedural modeling so much better and easier without having to do some of the more convoluted, um, you know, trickery to get the thing selected that you just want selected. Okay. Hope that makes sense. Didn't sound like a rant. Okay. Have a good weekend. Yum, yum.